Hello and welcome to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Drayton Park Golf Club. I'm in my swing studio again, uh, and I have to apologise for this. I was planning to go outside today, but it's minus two, feeling minus seven, and uh, I'm a delicate little flower. I didn't want to go purple on camera. Uh, it's a little bit too cold out there for me. So I, I thought I'd come in, film a couple of videos that I wanted to do inside anyway. Um, I hope you get a little bit more out of this. So the topic today is going to be about the wrists in the takeaway position, how that also starts to then affect the rest of the backswing. Before we get started, if you don't already, uh, please check us out on all our social media platforms. All the info you need is coming along the bottom of the screen now for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also the website address where a lot of these videos are stored and coaching packages uh, on there as well for you. So. I want to talk about, as I said, the, the wrists, the role of the wrists in the takeaway position, and I'm mainly going to be talking about my lead wrist. So for me, as a right-handed golfer, I'm talking about my left hand, uh, my lead wrist there, and what that's trying to do in the takeaway. So the couple of key points we're really looking for in that first takeaway movement, if we forget about the hands for a second and focus more on the club, is I like to see the club just slightly outside my hands rather than here on the inside, okay? We don't mind the club shaft parallel to the feet, but I like to see the club just slightly outside your hands in that takeaway position. And the takeaway the position is really what happens to first parallel, uh, P2, where the club is first parallel to the ground here, so it's at around pocket height. I want the club to be slightly outside your hands, and I want the leading edge of the golf club to be the same angle marrying up with your spine. So, to achieve that, okay, where the club is in the right position there, we need our wrist to do two things. We need them to cock upwards, and we do need a certain amount of wrist hinge. I tend to find people get too much wrist hinge, so too much this way, and what that causes is a lot of forearm rotation, and we tend to get the club way inside hands, and the club face very open. From there, it's very hard because you need to manipulate it with hands and arms action through impact. So you can generate speed, but it's all flash speed with hands and arms. And there tends to be a slowing of the lower body and the upper body to try and speed up the hands and arms to achieve that. So it's not a very efficient way to swing a golf club. So what I'm going to get you to do is feel where the wrists should be in that takeaway move. The first thing I need to say is to achieve this correct position, you do need a couple of fundamentals. We do need a good grip and a good grip pressure, so a neutral grip. We need the club running through the base of the fingers, okay, so into a neutral position, and we need to make sure we're not creating too much tension also with our grip, with our forearm. If we get a very palmy grip, which I guess is the most common fault we'd see, where the thumb's only sort of down the center, rather than my left thumb being on the right half and, and two to three knuckles showing here, so it's more in the fingers. If we get a very palmy grip and or we're gripping too much tension, it's very hard to actually achieve the right wrist angle and control this club. It feels very, very awkward and automatically there's an increase of tension because of my grip. So if we can get a very neutral grip, which we're not gonna go on to too much in this video, but a neutral grip and not gripping it too tight, we can start to achieve this correct takeaway position and wrist angle naturally. Okay, so we're not actually having to focus greatly on what the wrists are doing. It's really controlled by my upper body turning away from the target if I've got the right grip and the right grip pressure. Let me just go on to what the wrists are going to be doing. So what I want you to, to do as an exercise first is I want you to cock your wrists up so the club is parallel to the ground. And then what I want is a hinging of the wrist, not quite 90. 90 would be there where the club shaft is parallel to my feet line and the toe is up to the sky. So it's about 75 to 80 degrees of wrist hinge. So we're looking for the wrist to cock up. We're looking for wrist hinge, but not quite to 90 degrees, okay? So if I put my, then my trail hand on the golf club, that's what I want to achieve. That's what I want to feel. From there, it's really a rotation where my lead shoulder is working under my chin and my chest is turning away from the target to get to the correct top of the back swing position. And again, where you'll see my left wrist is in a pretty neutral, flat position, not in a cupped position and not in a bowed position here. So 
Good grip, good grip pressure. Cock the wrists up. Hinge, not quite to 90. Put your trail hand on. What I'm going to ask you to do is then go ahead and actually hit the shot from there. So let's try that. Cock my wrists up. Hinge, not quite to 90. So I've got the checkpoints I was looking for with the club head. Turn and hit. Might land on the line. I'm happy with that one. Yeah, so great data, but I'm not overly worried about the ball flight uh, when doing this exercise. It will feel a little bit alien, but it's great to get that feeling of where you should be in the takeaway position and turn and hit from there. I'm going to then go on to doing it a little bit more naturally. So what I want you to do is actually get into that position, stop there, look back at the ball, turn and hit. So we're getting to this position by having the right grip, the right grip pressure, and just turning my chest away from the target, then I'm into this natural position, same position I was trying to get with my lead wrist. So from there, we're gonna turn and actually hit. So let's try one of those. Good, back at the ball. Didn't feel quite as solid as the last one, a little bit out of the bottom of the club, but Similar ball flight, similar results. Pretty happy with it. Again, don't put a lot of pressure in on, on the strike. Once you've done those exercises, you can go into blended into a, a full swing at full pace without stopping. Okay, it's another great exercise for you to do is just do some practice swings with only lead, your lead hand on. Again, if you get the right grip more in the fingers and the right grip pressure, as you start to turn. So quarter of an amount of shoulder turn, the wrist will have sort of worked quarter of the amount by halfway back, the hands will start to have worked more half to three quarters of the amount of weight. So as we turn away from the target, the wrists are naturally starting to set as we want. It won't feel very natural doing that, okay, where the wrists are over hinging and the club's being pulled on the inside. We're looking for just a natural set of the wrists that's incorporating some cocking upwards, some hinging, but not over hinging in that takeaway move. So start to get that blend of what the wrists are doing as the body's starting to turn. So just doing some natural one-handed swings, and you'll see I can achieve the same takeaway position that feels like I can support the club quite well there. I can't support it very well here. And I couldn't support it with a lot of wrist set in the back swing if I tried to go too early. Let me go ahead and just hit one more. It's more of a natural swing for you. So I'm going to rehearse that first movement. Club back and then turn and hit. A little left. The worst one of the three actually. I'm going to quickly show you the data, not overly important. That one's gone a little longer, a little bit more roll um, as it was going left to target, but let's have a little look at it. Um, so this one, path is good, just club face is a little closed. Uh, happy with the first couple of swings I made. Um, so you can see pretty good data here to hit a very neutral draw. Path going to the right, club face open but closed to the path. Um, very centre strike, pretty happy with the angle of attack and the dynamic loft. Um, but don't worry too much about the ball flight itself. Really try and focus on what the wrists are doing in that first move and that's going to start to change what happens in the rest of the back swing. Get that first movement correct and the rest of it starts to build from there. Let me know how you get on with those exercises. Do post some comments and questions below and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Thank you.